So in this one, we are going to create our first app. Um, and the way we do that is with the models. So on this one, we're actually going to now define some stuff within our signups app. Um, we have to create a model first to define the data that we want. And it's pretty simple. You do class and then we're going to do sign up and it's models dot model. And you're going to take first name equals models dot char field max length equals 120 null equals true blank equals true. So what this means is it's a character field. So any ABC or one, two, three or any stars or special characters. Um, and it takes a max length of 120 characters. Um, so a space is also a character. So it's 120 of those. It can be blank in the database or empty in the database. So null in the database. Uh, and it can be blank as in, in the form or template that it's being added to. So um, these two are pretty much the same, except null in the database doesn't mean that you don't want it to be kind of required in the form. Okay, so we'll copy this. Command C is a fast way to do copy or control C if you're on Windows and then paste it. Uh, Command V or control V and then we'll do last name. Exact same thing, pretty simple. Um, this is gonna get their first and last name. And then we wanna get their email, so models.email field. And you can just, we wanna leave this one blank because um, it's gonna default to null equaling false. So that means there needs to be a required value in the database and then blank uh, equaling false, which means that there needs to be a required value when somebody submits a form. Uh, okay, so let's get rid of that. And I always like to put timestamps on things. So it kind of allows me to know when these, when somebody signed up. So there's two timestamps that I like to use. One is the original timestamp. So when it's first created, equals models dot char, or excuse me, date time field. And we are gonna do auto now add equals to true. And then auto now equals to false. So auto now add means when it's created, make a timestamp and that's true. Auto now means when it's updated or changed, make make a note of that date and time. I'm gonna make that false because we only want the one time that it was updated. Now the reverse is true when we make another one called updated. And we would just change this to false and this to true. Now, of course, you can kind of experiment with this on your own, um, but like timestamp, it's pretty standard that you want it to be this and then updated to this. That's kind of how you're going to want to do those things. Um, otherwise, you might confuse people and yourself later. Um, updated is just an updated time. Of course, you can say updated time or updated since, but updated is how we're going to use it. So let's kind of go over this again. We're gonna get their first name and last name. Both can be blank. We're gonna get their email. And then we're gonna set a timestamp when they first put it in. Um, and then if we ever make any changes to it, we are gonna set a timestamp for that as well. There's one more thing that we need to do and that's defining a Unicode. And we're gonna return self.email. Okay. So this is great, but if there's ever any foreign um, users that have special characters like an accent, uh, we actually want to turn this into a smart Unicode. And how we're going to do that is go from Django.utils.encoding import smart Unicode. So this is going to change it into a smart Unicode. Uh, basically, if there's any issues with like accents or anything like that, this is going to overcome that for us. So we just put that there and put parentheses around there and it's going to automatically encode it for us and it won't raise any errors or anything like that. Uh, another thing you can do using Python is just do string 
Um, but sometimes if there's accents, string will not convert the accents and then errors will happen. So just use smart Unicode. Uh, it's the easiest way to kind of set your Unicode data. Okay, cool. So now that we have this, uh, we can save it, go into our settings.py file, and we're gonna wanna look for installed apps, this right here. We're gonna use a single parentheses and type out signups, and then put a comma at the end. Signups, of course, is the name of this. So now that we have that done, um, and we're not gonna make any more changes to the models, we can do a sync DB, so Python, manage.py sync db or sync database if you notice it says creating table signups underscore signup um, that's great that's exactly what we wanted we wanted it to create that table so let's run the server again quick way to do that is by pressing up um, up will allow us to go to previous code that we've written and executed or executed meaning press entered and uh, press enter Okay, so we run that. Go back into Komodo Edit. And I want to point out something real quick here. As you notice, signups is plural, and then sign up is singular. And there's a reason for that. Signups is the name of the app, so it's going to hold all of the signups plural. Sign up is an instance. Okay, so every time you do it, it's an instance of sign up. When we have these, plural they are going to be signups so all of them together will be called signups one of them in singular is sign up uh, if that doesn't make complete sense you'll kind of see but basically i don't put s's here leave out the s's um, and keep it as a singular class that's all you want to kind of remember okay so now that we have this um, we kind of need to see how we can make this data useful. We want to put it in the admin. We want to actually be able to go into admin and test to make sure that this is working correctly. Now, of course, there's other ways to do this, um, but I'm going to be using Django admin to test a lot of the data as opposed to the command line and Python. Um, so for those of you who know Python, you can kind of experiment with this stuff in the command line. If you don't know Python, that's okay. We're gonna be jumping in and using the admin. Um, so in order for us to use this data, we have to import it. So from dot, so this is a relative import. It's going within the same folder that it's at. And notice Komodo Edit already gives you suggestions as to what it can use. So from models, import, sign up it gives you very quick access and that's one of the reasons i use komodo edit is because it kind of reminds you what's all in there so we want to import that and then we're going to do a class sign up admin admin dot model admin and then class meta model equals sign up okay so now that we have that defined, we need to register both the model and the signup model admin class. So that's pretty simple. We just do admin.site.register and we will first do the model and then we do the model admin. Okay, so now that that's there, we should be able to see this data here in the admin. So let's do a refresh. It shows up and notice, remember what I said again, Sign ups is here. The name of the app is right there. That could be anything. Uh, but sign ups is the name of the model that we had. And, or excuse me, it's the plural of the model that we had, not this singular. So it added that S automatically for us and it even separated the two words. And the reason it knew to separate is because I used this uppercase. All right. So now if we go in here, we have zero sign ups. Um, select sign up to change notice the singular and plural it's it's very intuitive in that sense so if we do add sign up timestamp and updated are not there and that's because we automatically basically set them um, so they don't need to show up in here and we can do first name justin mitchell and then coding for entrepreneurs at gmail.com hit save voila it shows up my model the the email and notice that it's showing the email here and how it did that is from this unicode so i can also let's just remove this for a second 
Um, and I can say some Unicode data here. You save that, do a refresh. That's what's gonna come up. So that is kind of cool with how our Unicodes work. And I'm gonna just do a, a few undos there with Command Z or Control Z, depending on what computer you're using. Um, and then we go back in here, do a refresh. It shows the email once again. And of course, this is taking self. So the instance that we put in and it's gonna take whatever we put in there. So first name, we do a refresh, there we go, right? So that's kind of cool. Um, now we have the model working, we have the admin working. Um, the next part, we actually wanna see a form like on a website, not using admin, because admin is really only for like you and your team. It's not for any user. Like you wanna just have a few people using the admin um, you do not want everybody to because it gives a lot of access to things that you just you just don't want to manage. You want to kind of think of how you can make an application for the user instead of using the Django admin. The Django admin is very good, but it has limitations and the Django community themselves say don't use the Django admin as for all of your users or any casual user at that. So in the next one, we will do the views. See you then.